Hello everybody, so here we are, we're going to do an example involving the Nernst equation. What we're going to do is we are going to determine the non-standard cell potential for the following reaction and conditions. So I'm going to oxidize aluminum and reduce manganese 2 to aluminum 3 and elemental manganese respectively. And the non-standard conditions I'm going to employ here are that I'm going to have two molar, not one molar, but two molar aluminum plus three. All right, so let's write out the Nernst equation and then I'll talk about maybe some of the common sources of error that students have when it comes to doing these sorts of calculations. So the version of the Nernst equation I suggested that you keep in mind was this one here. <clears throat> so squiggly E under non-standard conditions is the squiggly E under standard conditions minus gas constant temperature divided by moles of electrons Faraday times the natural log of the reaction quotient. The most common sources of error in solving these problems, I think, comes down to not doing the reaction quotient correctly and also, and I think somewhat surprising to me at times, misidentifying the moles of electrons. So we'll actually address the moles of electrons first. In order to correctly identify the moles of electrons that are being exchanged in the redox reaction, what must you do to the redox reaction? What must you do up here? I hope you said balance, right? You have to balance the redox reaction. As it is, I have a plus 2 charge on the left and a plus 3 charge on the right. So clearly right there, it is not balanced. So in order to get this guy to balance, I'm going to need to put a 3 in front of the manganeses and a 2 in front of the aluminums, okay? So then I have a net plus 6 on the left and a net plus 6 on the right. There we go. So my reaction's balanced. Now, how many moles of electrons are being exchanged during the redox reaction? Remember, however many electrons are coming out of the oxidation must also equal the moles of electrons going in to the reduction. So take a look. Take a look and tell me if you can identify the value of n here. Did you come up with 2? That would be wrong. Did you come up with 3? That would also be wrong. Did you come up with 2 times 3? That would be correct. There are 6 moles of electrons being exchanged here. For example, I have 2 aluminums which are in the oxidation state 0 and they go to two aluminums in an oxidation state of plus three. So two moles of aluminum go from zero to three. That's six moles of electrons. Or three moles of manganese two go down to three moles of manganese zero. So that too is a change of six electrons. All right, so our value of N is going to be six. Now we'll play with Q as we build up the equation. All right, so let's start filling in some values here. E is going to be equal to E0. You get E0 by looking at the reduction potential chart. You can't see it, but you can hear it. I have a reduction potential chart right here. And if I do the uh, reduction and oxidation half reactions and add them together correctly, I'm going to get a standard cell potential of 0. 4, 8 volts. <clears throat> now, subtract from that R. We're going to use 8.314. I'm using 8.314 because my volts, right, my volts are a joule per coulomb, so I need joules in my value of R. The temperature is 25 degrees, also known as 298, divided by the aforementioned 6 moles of electrons times Faraday's constant 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons, times the natural log of the reaction quotient. So the reaction quotient is 
The concentration or pressures of the products raised their balancing coefficients divided by the concentration pressures of the reactants raised their balancing coefficients. So you'll notice here that I have manganese solid and aluminum solid in the products and reactants respectively. What do I do with solids in the reaction quotient or to put it more generally the mass action expression? Right? Remember these go in as a one. They're essentially not there but they really are technically there as a one. So my mass action expression, my reaction quotient is going to have the concentration of the aluminum three which is two raised to the second power divided by the concentration of the just the manganese two because again I have a solid aluminum here the concentration of the manganese two which is one raised to the as you can see here the third power all right so if we do this calculation now, you should take out your calculator and make sure you can do this. This is another common source of mistakes. What I tend to do is I work these problems backwards. I solve the natural log first, then I multiply it by this numerator, divide it by that denominator, hit the plus minus sign, and add in 0.48. If you do all this and you do it correctly, you should get an answer of 0 0.47 volts. Now let us see if this makes sense to us. Under the conditions shown here in the problem, I get a voltage, 0.47, that's a little less than the standard voltage of 0.48. Let's just say it's less. I mean, it's barely less, but for now the important factor is that it is less. Does it make sense that when I start with 2 molar aluminum 3, and one molar manganese two, that I get a adjusted cell potential that's less than the standard cell potential. It should make sense, and I'm going to give you a hint as to how to have it make sense. Le Chatelier. This is another example of Le Chatelier, or as we Americans would say, Le Chatelier's principle. I have here a greater concentration of product than I do under standard conditions. Under standard conditions, this would be one molar, but I have two molar of it. So it's like I've added product. And when you add product relative to where the position used to be, it's going to want to shift away from that direction. So as I increase the concentration of the product side, this reaction is going to sort of shift in the left-handed direction. Going left in this case is in the non-spontaneous direction. Right? Going forward it's spontaneous because I have positive 0.48 volts for this reaction going forward. So that tells me it's spontaneous. But by adding product I'm now shifting the reaction temporarily to the left which is in the, the non-spontaneous direction. So my cell potential trends in the non-spontaneous direction. Now I haven't perturbed the reaction nearly enough to make it non-spontaneous, I've just squeezed it a little bit in that direction. That's why the potential goes down. All right, so there's an example of non-standard cell potentials using the Nernst equation. Be on the lookout for the common mistakes of how to set up the reaction quotient correctly and how to correctly identify the number of electrons that are being exchanged in the reaction. All right, so there's an example. All for now. We'll see you next time.